Okay, so in this video, we will consider two exceptional trigonometric integrals when we initially have the integral in terms of sine and cosine, and the trick is to convert this expression into tangent and secant. So let's see what I mean by this. So suppose we look at the integral first of sine squared of 3x over cosine to the 4 of 3x dx. We only have even powers here, so our first method is out. And if you were to use the half angle formula on sine squared, you would change the angle from 3x to 6x, and you couldn't divide through the cos of the 4 as you would have different arguments. And so this is not going to work. So then you say, well, what will work? Well, in this case, it's just being a little sneaky. Factor it 1 over cos squared alone, so you'll have sine squared of 3x over cos squared of 3x times, of course, the leftover 1 over cosine squared of 3x. And then you're saying, well, what's the point of this? Well, the arguments are still the same, and sine over cosine is tangent, and so sine squared over cos squared is tangent squared. So sine squared of 3x over cos squared of 3x is simply the tangent squared of 3x, and 1 over cosine of 3x is secant of 3x, and so 1 over cos squared will be secant squared of 3x. And now you may wonder, well, why is this nicer than the original integral? The answer is that this is a simple u substitution. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And now we're basically done. Take on both sides the differential, and you obtain that du is, and once again here be careful to apply the chain rule, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of 3x times the derivative of the argument, 3x, the derivative is of course 3 times dx. We wanted to solve for secant squared of 3x dx. Divide both sides by 3, and mission accomplished. And now we can replace, and you'll see we'll have a trivial integral. u is tan of 3x, and so tan squared of 3x is simply u squared. And secant squared of 3x dx is du over 3. And now we have a simple polynomial. Factor the 1 over 3 outside as a constant multiple. And we integrate u squared, of course, with the simple power rule. So a third times u cubed over 3 plus c, which gives you u cubed over 9 plus c. And finally, we want the answer back to a function of x, so we replace u by tan of 3x. So we have tangent cubed of 3x over 9 plus c. And that's our antiderivative to sine squared of 3x over cos of the 4 of 3x. So there you go. So sometimes, when you're stuck with sines and cosines, and nothing else is going to work, try and convert your sines and cosines, if possible, into tangents and secants, and hopefully you can make a simple u substitution. Let's look at one other example. The second one is a little more subtle. So what if we ask for the integral of sine to the 4 of x over cos squared of x? The difference with the first example is I've basically just, ignoring the 3x being changed for an x, I've swapped the powers. It was here a sine squared over cos to the 4, now it's a sine to the 4 over a cosine squared. So what can we do here? Well, if you do the same thing, if you have a sine squared over cos squared times a sine squared, well, the sine over cos will be cotangent, but the sine squared 
not so clear. We can be sneaky here and use another identity, namely sine squared being 1 minus cos squared. Let's see what happens in this case. So as I've just said, if we square, so I'll keep everything else the same, 1 over cos squared of x dx, and if I square sine squared, I of course get sine to the 4. But instead of writing sine squared, I will write 1 minus cosine squared. Let me square the numerator, which will give us 1 minus 2 cosine squared of x plus cos to the 4 of x, and this is of course all over cos squared. Now this may not look good, but if you divide through each term by cos squared, you'll find something quite interesting. So we have the integral of 1 over cos squared, minus 2, cos squared over cos squared is 1, so we're left with minus 2, plus cos to the 4 over cos squared, plus cos squared. And now we have these three integrals. So let's split them up. The first one will integrate, and actually we'll be sneaky here, we'll skip a step, sort out. If you think of it, secant of x is 1 over cosine, and so 1 over cos squared is secant squared of x. But this is a trivial integral, right? You're asking for the antiderivative of secant squared of x. So you're asking for a function whose derivative is secant squared. The answer is, of course, tangent. As the derivative of tan of x is secant squared of x. So the first integral converting to a secant squared becomes trivial. The integral of minus 2, of course, is minus 2x. Plus, and we're left with now the integral of cosine squared of x dx. And now we recognize this, of course, as a problem where we have to apply the half-angle formula. An integral involving a single cosine with a single even power, and so with the half-angle formula, we're going to be done. The half-angle formula is that cos squared of x is 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. As always, I will factor the one-half outside as a scalar multiple. And now we can easily integrate the leftover two functions. The integral of 1 is x, x times one-half plus x over 2, plus one-half. And again, by the chain rule, the integral of cos of 2x is sine of 2x over 2. Of course, plus c. And then we can simplify a little bit. 10 of 2x, 10 of 2x. 10 of x, sorry. Now, we have minus 2 plus 1 half. Minus 2 is negative 4 over 2. So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so negative 3 half times x, and finally plus sine of 2x over 4. And of course plus the arbitrary constant of integration. And that's it. And this is a special problem, but a very nice one if you think of it. We had to use the first in the first step, replacing sine to the 4 by sine squared squared, and replacing sine squared by 1 minus cos squared. Then we expanded, we divided through each term by cos squared, 1 integral was trivial, 1 had to be converted to a function of secant squared, and the other we had to use the half angle formula. So both of these examples 
are there just to show you that sometimes you'll have to juggle with several techniques at the same time. So in conclusion, when you have an integral involving sines and cosines only, there are three fundamental uh, possibilities. The first one, you have at least one odd power, then it's rather easy, factor a sine of x or a cos of x, make a u sub, and you're done. If you only have even powers, use the half angle formula as many times as needed, and sometimes when both of these fail, you have to be a bit more sneaky in combining several techniques, and one of which, which was new in this video, was converting some parts of the integral in terms of sine and cos in terms of sorry tangent and secant. The whole thing here, we convert it back to tan and secant. In the second case, only a part of it. And that's it.